in my mind here. All right, so, uh, resume. Okay, cool. I think we're good. Here we go. Here is the show, and it starts in three, two, one. Cool. <laughs> Well, well, well. Hey, everybody. Welcome to CORE. This is the podcast, unafraid to say Sony and Microsoft should kiss each other on the lips. I'm Scott Johnson with Bush Schwartz and John Jagger. We're here to talk about video games for the week, uh, all the goings on, all the ups and downs, and uh, plenty of stuff uh, to go around. So we'll talk about all that in a second. If I seem a little flustered, uh, and if you're wondering where the show was yesterday, uh, long story this week. My mom's been in the hospital, a bunch of going on with that. Uh, good news is I think they're letting her go tonight. Um, and they're sending her home with oxygen. Everything should be on the up and up. So that's the short on that. And then uh, I went and saw Fury Road, right, or sorry, Furiosa right before this. And uh, that went longer than I thought it uh, should have. And I, and I ate too much chicken fingers. Uh, so I'm a little burpy. <laughs> so there's a lot. Sorry to hear that. There's a lot yeah. going on. But you know what? I'll take it. And I'm glad you guys are here uh, to hang out with me tonight. And uh, if you missed our pre-show, uh, join our Patreon because we talk all about it without any spoilers. All right. Right. Uh, let's get into it, guys. We got stuff to talk about, and here's our big topic. This one hit extra hard because I know we're all three fans of turn-based strategy, real-time strategy. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 uh, whether it's your XCOMs or your freaking uh, whatevers, man, we like it. Civilization, <laughs> XCOM, and the rest, and the rest. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, get your Warcraft and Starcraft in there. Your RTS, your sure. turn-based S. Yeah, all of it. We love them. Uh, all the S's. Yeah. We're a huge fan. You got entire companies who do nothing but publish that stuff, it feels like. Like, um, what's the one with the P that makes you know, Paradox. Paradox. Paradox's entire existence is based on people enjoying yeah. deep strategy games, right? Well, there's a new study out that says that interest from gamers is dropping uh, substantially in strategy games. And I. Well, I don't want to, this isn't one of those shows where we're like, oh, that means a big thing and you check out the thumbnail. We're freaking out. We're not freaking out. But I did think it was interesting. And I think um, as people who enjoy these kinds of games, we should probably, you know, discuss it a little bit. But I'll give you the, the basics here. It's a report from Quantic Foundry. They have nine years of data from the researcher's own gamer motivation profile tool, which tracks how appealing different aspects of games are to different people. Categories include destruction, excitement, competition, community, challenge, stra uh, strategy, completion, power, fantasy, story, discovery, and design. Uh, they look back at what's, mo or what's most motivating gamers across the years and found all of these have remained relatively consistent except for one. The only category I just mentioned that haven't either grown or stayed similar is strategy. Uh, it says here, quote, gamers who score high on this comp uh, component enjoy games that require careful decision making and planning. According to the summary, they like to think through their options and likely outcomes. Uh, then they go on to show this chart, which shows a pretty precipitous drop in interest <laughs> uh, over the years in that nine years in those kinds of games. Um, now, the reason it surprises me or surprised me is because I feel like some of the best strategy games of recent memory have happened in the last nine to 10 years. And so this doesn't track what, with what I thought was going on, like a resurgence in turn-based and, you know, everybody wanting to be the next Baldur's Gate or XCOM or whatever it may be. Um, you guys worried about this at all? You worried the future of, uh, you know... Civ 7 might not happen. You know, I don't want to go that extreme. But, John, we'll start with you. What do you take from this data? What do you think it means? Uh, I think it means probably what, if we're all honest with ourselves, is true. Like, I, I, I do like strategy games. I like a lot of the games they mention that fall under the uh, strategy genre overall. But uh, there was a, a discussion in our Discord... Um, about uh, what was the game you've been playing, Bo? The number one most sought after Steam release that was a strategy game, like Banished. Oh, wow. oh Manor Lords. Manor Lords. Manor yeah. Lords. Yeah, there was a discussion about Manor Lords. And uh, our friend Jocelyn 
came in and she shared a screenshot from that, which was obviously placeholder text. And it was a tutorial message. And in the text for the tutorial message, it just said, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and that's that's what they wrote for their placeholder text, obviously. Wow. And I made the joke that like, hey, when I am not in the mood for a strategy game, this is what those tutorials actually look like to me. Mm. And what I have found in general, if I'm being honest with myself and with all of you listening right now, is that I have gotten to a place where... I think I can multitask and I don't think I can actually multitask, mm. but I feel like I have to. And there's this weird thing that happens where when I pull up a video game and all of a sudden I got to do a bunch of reading and I have to stop whatever's going on on my second monitor, because trust me, something's going on on the second monitor and put 100 percent of my focus on the game. There's a little part of me that goes, "Ugh, what am I doing? And sometimes I might turn it off. It's not in my show notes today because technically I played uh, that new Ratchet and Clank game. Oh, yeah. Um, well, which, which one uh, is Ratchet it? and Clank. Rift uh, Apart. Yeah, Rift Apart where you jump through portals and it changes the whole surroundings and all that stuff. That game. But I was so busy watching some YouTube video when I booted it up that I couldn't hear the gameplay, and I played the game for like 20 minutes <laughs> without any idea what anybody had to say or was going on, and that's a major part of the game. And I got done and went, I don't know what's going on, I don't know what anybody's saying, I don't know what the story is, and I consider myself the story guy when I'm playing games. Why did I do this to myself? Mm. And I think a lot of us are getting to that place. We talk a lot about second screen. There's a very good chance that if you're listening to this very podcast, we are on a second monitor or a second device while you are doing something else. Like, yep. we do it a lot. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it's something that I think we all kind of do. And strategy games demand more attention than that. And mm. I think that's why it's so comfortable for me to go back and play an old version of Civ that I know really well, but I've yet to be able to get into Crusader Kings 3 or Stellaris or something where I actually need to learn the game. Mm. And I, I think that that's a problem. I think that's a direction we're going. And to put it on a more broad perspective, I think that's why for a good long while there... We had this big meditation craze in the world where people were like, oh, you just got to meditate. You just got to unplug and step away for a while and focus on one thing. Because I think in general, people are not doing that very often. So we're not paying attention like we used to, maybe, yeah. as part of this. Like this data may not reflect so much a disinterest in this kind of gaming. It's a, an ability for people to either keep up or not do the split screen thing or not want to be distracted by something else. Uh, or they just are they're trying to balance all these things. And, you know, scientifically, we're not supposed to be able to multitask, but we all think we do. And and so we try to. And so what do we end up doing? Well, we can play a game that's farmed together, too, that doesn't take any thinking, really. You just got to go around and harvest stuff and make money. And I can watch some TV show to catch up on. I do that very thing. In fact, I did that by default this week for most of my gaming time because everything else it said to me, are you ready to focus? Scott, are you ready to, you know, are you ready to lock in, get the brain going, you know, and just really, and I think I shied away from it this week in particular because um, I just, my head just wasn't having it. And I have a feeling those two things are tied. Bo, what's your, what's your hot take on, on this sort of thing? Given, you know, I, you're one of my, you're one of the people in my life who I, I feel like will be a strategy gamer till you're dead. You know? Well, yeah, I've played a ton of StarCraft too this week, and I've been watching. G I you know watched all of season one of GSL, and I'm watching season two of the 2022 GSLs. Yeah, um, I feel like my interest in RTS, like I definitely counter whatever this thing's trying. I'm like, it almost feels like a joke. <laughs> I'm just like, what do you like to me? Just to my personal life, yeah. I'm like, I couldn't be more interested in strategy games right now. Um, they're enjoyable. Uh, there's some like merit to what John's saying. Like, if you're not in the mood to learn new systems and stuff, then it can feel like a wall that you don't want to get around. So I don't know if there's a collective amount of that. Mm -hmm. The first thing I think of, because you know, I always think these uh, gaming 
research things are up their own butt and don't trust them. You know, like they're explaining because the, one one part of the article I looked at was like, oh, people are using TikTok, so their brains have melted and they can't do strategy. I'm like, that's not real. That's just your. That's just some idea you have. It's dumb. Hmm. I think most likely the explanation is game. There's more. The gaming is like just is being barfed out everywhere, right? Like we have more and more people that are interested in games and that probably dilutes the subset because strategy games have always been a subset of overall gaming. Like 20 years ago to buy a PC and to be into the nerdiest strategy game uh, required some resolve and commitment to get to that place, whereas you just didn't buy a Nintendo and do it. So it's always still a subset. Now that our machines are more ubiquitous, strategy still is mostly a PC uh, thing. And um, so I don't know if these are the same people that they've surveyed all these years that have changed their tastes Mm. or if it's a random sampling and the random sampling maybe just shows less interest in StarCraft because that track, or the StarCraft strategy, because that tracks, like you look at, you know, how popular a strategy game like starcraft is and how viewership numbers have diminished well, i don't is... know if it's tiktok so much as it is maybe just more people entering the space that don't have a taste for those things it feels like this yeah. story aligns with what you're saying a little bit there's this there's a whole quote in here on the report i went to the original report and it says we often blame social media for our decreased attention spans um, but there's a lack of concrete or sorry there's a lack of concrete evidence for this so I, I don't know that they're saying that. It seems I like mean, they're saying the opposite. They're just saying... Yeah, I mean, I, I played StarCraft this week and had a second screen up. I played Heroes of the Storm this week and had a second screen up. Well, sure. And it, I, I think that, uh, to me, just to clarify, it's for games you know, like any game you know is a comfort game. But the barrier to entry for a game you don't know is very different between, hey, sit down and learn the systems of an RTS or a, you know, a turn-based strategy game versus hey pick up this first person shooter and and shoot demons real quick Mm. so i I think any game can be a second screen experience if you're familiar with it but if you're going to learn it and do it well i think the barrier to entry for a strategy game is higher than most things and i also think there's been kind of a muddying the waters on what strategy games even are like i think one of the most fulfilling strategy experiences i've had in gaming has been playing games like baldur's gate 3 on the highest difficulty you would not call that a strategy game but there's a large amount of strategy involved in it and learning and that's another game that we heard you know from a by and large that game was widely celebrated but from people who didn't like it one of the most common complaints i saw was it's too much to learn yeah yeah there, there's definitely a strategic layer to any turn-based rpg so sure are they counting that <laughs> like because that counts <laughs> like yeah uh setting up your team in the most tactically efficient way uh, to take on an encounter is strategizing so i assume they just mean the genre like well they so, t- they describe you, it all turn-based like XCOM. And you've got Command and Conquer, StarCraft style games, which there aren't a lot of them. So how how are people going to be widespread interest in a field that doesn't have a lot of? Uh, I don't think they narrowed it served. down yeah. to the game. I think it was asking players what they find fulfilling, and having strategy as a possibility was low. So yeah. I don't think it was like, well, I only play you know strategy yeah. games. You know, you know what this is. This is people. Okay, I'm going to get in trouble here. Let's insult some people. Yeah, um, get them, Bo. Get them. <laughs> this, is people play, this is people playing Genshin Impact. It's not social media. It's mistaking gacha for good gameplay. And uh, well, you mean you, but, you are you are what you eat, right? But so, we don't know what the, we don't know who these people are. I mean, I'm, we can assume. I mean, that, I have I no idea. I, I I can schlup theories out just as good as Quantic Foundry can, you know. But like, <laughs> there's a lot of people who are like, man, this is sick gameplay, you know. And of course, they're not going to like strategy because they want to open gacha boxes. Yeah. That's what they like, so that's what they're going to answer. But I mean, I guess to their credit, I want to make this clear. This isn't just some schmo on YouTube thinking he's got an idea. This is like they're they're doing like standardized t- um, test methods, uh, control groups. Like they're not screwing around. They have like, no. you know, data. So it's not like well, they're what? they're not just going, you know what I think? I think gamers are stupider. No. You know what I mean? Well, 
Well, no, that's me doing that. I but, know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's be, it's it's my sense is like people are gravitate to what they. I don't know. Maybe people are really going to disagree with me about this, but you like what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes it's like John said, there's friction in discovering a new game, a new genre, a new set of rules. So people play what they're comfortable with. And when they respond, what do they like? Well, I like this, but they might also like this other thing that's strategy, but they don't, they haven't like given it the effort or time to do it. So they might also answer that they like it. They're just not participating in it. Like that, that's that whole thing where it's like, you can't always rely on what, but what gamers let's say gamers what you know players or potential customers are saying because they can only in the aggregate in the mob mm-hmm. imagine the things they have yeah when you have a new idea or when you have something awesome but nobody sees that it's awesome because uh they're not participating in it y- you can still come up with a product that people will be like oh shit i didn't realize i would have liked something like this but now that i have it it's my favorite thing Right. So, you know, that that's where it's like I look at this day and I'm like, well, yeah, they're busy playing. There's a lot more if you look at the oeuvre of games that are available, there aren't a lot of top-tier strategy games that have widespread adoption. Right. So, you know, I yeah. think of course, uh the the answers are going to be this way, but I don't think it's like TikTok or anything else. It's like what John's saying. There's friction learning those things, but once like you know, we all try to stay out of learning Warhammer, but everyone I know who starts <laughs> painting minis and getting into Warhammer loves it, right? But before they start Warhammer, they're like, it's not for me. And then they start Warhammer and they're like, Warhammer's amazing, you know? So sure. uh, that's what I'm talking about. It's it's that adoption. And I think we have a lot of new blood uh, uh, who are trying uh, gateway level games and not deep like to me a strategy game is a deep tier i like games and i need mechanics yeah that goes that goes straight to my theory which is that it's a problem we've talked about on the show before but there's so much coming out um you know when i was in my 20s there was maybe a big title a month that you would track and be interested in maybe two if you were lucky um nowadays there's every tuesday and friday i feel like there's 10 things i'm interested in and mm-hmm. then even when I grab one I'm interested in, like I grabbed a, a city builder called Synergy that I really wanted to play. I love the art style, I love everything about it. But as soon as I opened it, I went, oh, I, I have so many of these in my head already. Why aren't these rules the same as they always are? You know, I kind of, I just wasn't right. in the mood to learn a whole new system. And so I think there's a volume issue um, with this. And and so you're right. Once people discover, once they discover the thing that they love, then they end up loving it and they're all about it, whether it's 40 K or city builders or civ like four four X games or whatever. But I think there's just so much other stuff that finding it and getting that discovery going is more, is more why this number is low, but also young gamers hear that and they just think old men, they go strategy games. That's what my grandpa plays. You know? Yeah, I think that that leans into a lot of what I, I I'm kind of thinking because so I think people are using the skill set and they're they're I think strategy is fulfilling to people like if you're gonna break it down to buzzwords and you know what are you getting fulfillment out of a video game like again you have to have a fundamental understanding of what it is you're liking in video games versus what you're not again Baldur's Gate three one of the most popular video games of last year has a heavy strategy element. But if you ask people who really liked that game, hey, what's the thing that you think you like about that game? People would go, oh, the fantasy, the story, Mm -hmm. the setting, the characters. Like, strategy was a very important pillar of that game that not a lot of people, I think, actively recognized the strategy. Look at Souls-like video games, one of the most popular genres of video games right now. And what is one of the key identifying factors of that type of video game is hitting a wall, failing, and having to adapt a strategy to deal with that. It doesn't feel like a strategy game. It feels very different. But people are still using 
a strategic approach to playing a video game, a methodical strategic approach to getting through it. And if you ask them why they like it, they'd be like, oh, the bosses are cool. <laughs> it's a mid-action game. Well, They're not thinking yeah. about the methodology that they applied to get enjoyment and complete that video game. Yeah, you're talking... It's, it's not yeah. moving things on a map. You're right. You're, well, you're talking about my daughter. She doesn't like turn-based strategy, but she loved Baldur's Gate all the way to the end and played like mad. And I said to her, "Are we have we converted? She's like, well, Dad, it's not that, you know, it's not really a pure strategy game. There's more strategy <laughs> in it than there is in most games I've ever played. There's a ton in there. Yes. So she just doesn't know. So John makes a perfect point. That's exactly true, yeah. I think. And when I've when the medicine has sugar in it, it goes down better. Yeah. You know, there you all go. That, yeah. all, that bon all that boning in Baldur's Gate 3 distracts from the fact <laughs> that you're a strategy nerd. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Sure. Yeah, yeah I mean, next this... civilization game. If you get to sleep with all the world leaders at certain levels, I guarantee you it's going to change the way we talk about civilization, right? There. Yeah, if I can bed Gandhi, I'm in. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say, Bo? You were, you had a thought. Oh were... yeah, no, just that you like you're on, you guys are on the same wavelength as me with this, which is just you know there's a lot of like the Elden Ring. It's hard to miss this week, but um, there's a you know one of the biggest streamers, Kai Sinat. This is a big deal. He's playing Elden Ring. This is like an NBA 2K Live. By the way, like sports games are strategy games too. Yeah, the kind of, yeah. Like, they're uh, they're yeah, RTSs. Sure. Yeah. Le real sports are strategy games. You literally meet with the coach and you're like, what should we do to beat the other team? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't want any strategy. Just give it to me in real simple terms. Like pass the ball, shoot it in the net. Um, no, usually a sports team will implement a strategy, which is why it's so funny that he, you know, they made a big deal. Like, Elden Ring such a hard game. And for the record, he died an embarrassing 1,700 times in his progress. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they made a big deal about it. The rest of us are here like, you know, you know, when you're like, this, 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 why is it a big deal when this guy plays it? Obviously, it's because a lot of people watch him. But a lot of people watch him probably think it's a big deal that he's engaging in the strategy like he'll have to engage with strategy that John talked about, which is at some point you're going to hit a wall and you're either going to quit in front of 200,000 people, or you're going to figure out how to beat it. Um, so I, I don't, there's strategy layers in many games yeah. and, uh, when the, when the medicine has sugar in it, it goes down better, which is why I think it's like this seventh level of hell where you're like, these games, I'm now interested in strategy, and I figured out all the strategy in these games. Now I need XCOM. I need StarCraft. I need something to satisfy a deeper, complex layer of strategizing, if you're into it, right? I, I think one of the friction barriers is people feel intimidated. That was a big thing during our Heroes games, was getting people into that game who thought they could never play a MOBA, because it looks way too hard. Because right. that's, a, that's, a, that's an RTS, too. It's a... I, I like Greg Streets. He had a tweet once about it, which I always considered it a MOBA, but he's like, it's an RTS where you just control one unit, which is less intimidating for more people. Yeah. And it's like, he's oh, right. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. He's and, right. And there's um, a reason why he saw that take over and kind of watched RTSs recede into the background. There's a hope for a resurgence. I'm not so sure that's coming. Like this one, what's the one called that the X Blizzard guys are making that you played the beta for? Stormgate. 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 I, I'm not yeah, sure that was the answer, the but if Blizzard thought they were going to make a trillion dollars, they'd have more StarCraft out by now. Like the, the you know the story we heard from that YouTuber that the you know the X Blizzard guy that they made more money on the Sparkly Pony and WoW than they did the entirety of Wings of Liberty. The the business will also dictate a lot of this. Like if 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 it's an if we as the industry grows. And more and more people play, that means a more diverse base of players. We can't assume that a majority of those players are going to be strategy players. They're going to be people I think the that... Torch, are, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? The torchbearers for RTS at Blizzard, I think, are gone. Yeah, they don't do that Ultimately. I, I think... I think the, I, my sense because even just seeing, like, Mike Morheim at SC2 events in Korea, like, back in the day, like, just... You know, like, just, like, you kind of got the impression... Uh, that he was like, we need to make Starcraft. Like, this needs to be a thing. I like this. I want our company to be making it, you know. And, but you now get a boardroom of custodians, and they're like, nobody listens. To Quantic Foundry says nobody likes strategy. You better not make one of those. Well, you know? maybe. Like, but I, but also you don't see anything over at 
Morheim's new company that's a strategy game is by all accounts there's not working on anything like yeah. that. Well, we haven't seen anything yet, but that's why people have put a lot of hope on Zero Point and Stormgate to be the torchbearers. Like I said, uh, we can. That's a, it's a topic for another. Like whether they're succeeding, maybe is a topic for another uh, time. But there still is an audience for it. Like um, the GSL still runs, mm-hmm. and they do community like kind of how dota does it where they do community war chests where you can buy and pledge money for the players to win it's still pretty humble per season i think the pool's about like 80k or something like that us but yeah um there's still there still is enough interest there that people are donating it just it really needs i think if you're gonna do rts it really a lot of that surge came with the 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 esports of it you know i don't think you just make uh strategy games sexy without something like to to build a community around uh, outside the game well back you in the know, day I, like starcraft one days 1998 they were just making a game they wanted to make they didn't know yeah. about esports yeah. didn't exist they weren't doing any of those things so i kind of wish that's how things were now but i also know that they got bean counters who go all right well starcraft was kind of a net loss for us given our our current goals for a small team like stormgate uh, they should go for after that niche, but the problem is it is kind of a niche now. So I just don't think we get the big stuff. Homeworld, there's a good example. Homeworld three launched what a week ago, and um, that did not do great reviews or sales. Yeah, I, I kind of shied on buying it after seeing the reviews. It's a, a it's a machine that can feed itself, but everybody's afraid to do it. Yeah, like the yeah. pro- the problem is this: the way people approach doing real time strategy right now is well let's make another one and see if this gets people and that no of course not why why would somebody buy starcraft 3 right now because they liked starcraft 1 or 2 right and they're still around and they're still playing video games and they're still into it sure what what companies like blizzard people that have the property that have the built-in audience should have done and should do just to repeat myself again is don't be afraid to chase trends and evolve if they made a starcraft game that was not an rts game to keep that brand relevant and interesting then you open the door to bringing in a whole bunch of people that like your property that are into your property and you go hey here's a real-time strategy game try it and you get people that are now trying it not because they were fans of StarCraft 1 and 2, but because they're fans of StarCraft, the universe and right. world, and they go, oh shit, I really like a real-time strategy game. Because that's what we all had to do at some point. At some point, somebody had to go out and go, hey, you know what? This might be a type of video game that I'm interested in. There's babies being born all the time. There's kids growing up playing video games. And we're not giving them an opportunity to discover these genres because we keep just slapping a two or a three on stuff that already exists. And that might as well say, hey, this isn't interesting to you. Right. But if you make a game that is relevant, that does catch their eye, that's a gateway into the universe, you can then go, hey, and why don't you also try this? And they go, oh, yeah, I'd love to try that. Yeah. And then they go, oh, my gosh, here's a genre of gaming that I absolutely love. But... I, in a lot of ways, it feels like strategy has also been relegated to, well, you're either in it or you're not a part of it. Mm. Yeah, there's a bit of that. I think also um, in my you know 20s, when I guess I'd have been about 23, 24 in the first, uh, War, or when Warcraft 2 came out, it was at 94 or something like that. Um, I remember, I mean, we everybody lost their minds. We were so excited. StarCraft, when it came around, wasn't so much about, hey, it's a RTS that no one's heard of in a world we haven't heard of coming out that we just hey we're all rts fans right it wasn't that it was the warcraft people are making their next game it's even got craft in it and it's starcraft it's the future but it's these guys again that's what drew us in like you were saying the universe of starcraft 2 might or starcraft in general might draw people in if you came from another direction a shooter uh something else you know whatever whatever it may be or and they just it's another game from blizzard back when that meant more than it does exactly now. it's exactly right like we knew we you know if anything warcraft's where like there's no blizzard without warcraft being a giant hit and being very good by all standards at the time 
And then everything after that was all built on that. I was like, oh, they're doing a Star, they're doing a space based one. Oh, they're making a, a hack and slash freaking uh, dark fantasy thing with Diablo. What's the, tell me more? Like, like they really fed off of that. And that's the only reason that worked. If you want to come out of nowhere today and make an RTS, you're going to have an uphill battle. Even those Stormfront guys are Storm, what, Stormgate, sorry. They have to yep. always remind us that they all came from Blizzard. They have to constantly do that. I don't know if you've noticed, yeah. but every time they open yeah. their mouths, it's like, well, we were at Blizzard when we did this. Hey, Metzen gave us this advice. Like they're constantly evoking their past so that people will give a shit. It's a hard mm -hmm. sale if you're not already in yeah. there. Yeah. Anyway. I think um, uh, with this graph, too, a little bit it does correspond with the, uh, the ebbing of esports in general. Right. I mean, if you think mid 2000s, we were all high on Overwatch. Uh, Magic was, you know, had a lot of interest. Uh, Hearthstone tournaments got a lot more viewership, including, you know, StarCraft benefited. League, like, you don't hear as much about League these days, even though it's still really big. I think in China, mm -hmm. you know, um, I don't think really people think Counter Strike Valorant too much as strategy games, but they, of course, have strategy. But um, I just think. Overall, the trend in gaming was a lot of support for that was pulled out, and so a lot of faith in east like that esports audience. Like if you're into esports, you'd be like, "Yeah, I like strategy," because I'm watching, you know, this stuff. Right. But now everything's like either uh, had the floor pulled out from underneath them in terms of you know big support, and it's just not like you you just don't see it as much like the the emphasis on what's going on in esports. Right now, it's like streamer esports. Mm -hmm. Like, what streamer said, what weird racist thing, or who are we canceling this week? Like, it's like that. That meta has shifted in terms of the online space and how that connects into the wider gaming it's audience. True. People are less interested yeah. in how good Kai is at games, and this is no shade on him. It's kind of true across the board, but they're more interested in this back and forth about is that game any good and then him finally doing it and then kevin having kevin hart on there to talk about it like that's what streaming is now it's not about right who's the, right. Who's the yeah. best it's it's just i just remember at that particular time the it, people to follow were people who were competing at the esports level now you know it's either it's boobies or political people or just people who yell a lot yeah or you can barely speak uh, clearly, like XQC. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> my impression of XQC. He did a good job. It's, yeah, a, you know, it's it, almost like I'm watching Kick. I didn't even realize I was still here on. Is that and, Booba? Is that Booba? Booba? Yeah. You know, likes, like he says Booba a lot or whatever. I think, yeah, I feel like since he started saying Booba, that's when I started hearing Booba again. I mean, probably it's the yeah. audience, right? Yeah, it's an old, it's an old meme, sir, but it still checks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you have it. Well, uh, uh, any other thoughts on this before we uh, move forward? If it just feels like to me, this feels like a natural change, given all these other factors. Like, I think this is know. we're you know th this is pointing to another trend that we don't need uh, someone to analyze for us to understand is that all the innovations coming from small and indie studios right now mm. i mean the triple a field is sucking the big one i expect more and more losses deserved or not right because there's the you know the uh the gamer gate cancel crowd that's going around i'm not really with that but it is true that um i there's definitely a lack of good original stuff from a lot of AAA developers. I, I expect to see that continue to flounder and for all kinds of excuses to come out about that. And I think this points to that. Yeah. Because even if a game isn't great, if you've got the marketing spend to have it everywhere, you're probably still going to sell a lot and then complain it wasn't enough. But anyway. Yeah. It's all good. Some of this goes to John's whole uh, where AAA is headed stuff. And this just feels like more fuel for that or more... I don't know, more confirmation of that a little bit. But um, yeah, I agree with that point. Well, uh, let us know what you think. We'd love to hear. 801-471-0462. Voicemails, emails, uh, texts, whatever. Uh, emails come to us at talktothecore at gmail.com. What do you think of the future of strategy games? And if you work for somebody like, I don't know, who is it again with the P? <laughs> Paradox. Paradox. 
That's good. He's asking at least. Yeah. He's not just going like uh, parallels. If you're <laughs> yeah. if you work at Furiosa or no Furiosa, uh, that's all I can think of right now. Um, if you work will... at Paradox or some other strategy studio, we'd love to hear what your take is because you know it's interesting. Sorry, Bo. What? No, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, okay. I can't. I was well. Yeah. I mean, I was just gonna say I, I'm, I still have my name as Gorath on Team Jumble Force because I liked. <laughs> You came up with Jumble Force. I, yeah. don't know, I don't remember what the original thing was, but Jumble Force is my favorite. You should keep East it forever. Force team name. Yeah, never lose it. It's if if this ever comes raging back, we need to be ready to jump on the, the core. Well, it's the core esports org. You want yeah. to be on Jumble Force? Okay. Yeah, welcome to the team. Be on team Jumble Force. Y'all. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, let's get to some stuff that we played this week. How about I tell you guys about a game that came out in 2015? <laughs> Okay, but yeah. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why this even happened. I just downloaded it and thought I was in the mood. So I started playing. Um, I picked up an old save of my save in Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yeah. And I don't know why. I, it's a Is good, that the second one? That's the second and best one of the new ones, in my opinion. Okay. Did you I do think, it on Steam Deck? I think that I am on Steam Deck. It's, it syncs to my PC as well, so I played a bit on both. But it um, it is easily, in my my, again, my opinion, everybody, that it's the best of those three new ones. The first one was a great start. Second one, I think, is maybe the best Tomb Raider game ever made. And the third one is okay, but didn't quite reach the heights of two uh, in my memory. And I never played three, I don't think. And I really loved two. So I, I think I'm with you on yeah. this. Two's great. I think Shadows I, I think I agree. Shadow's good, but it's just not it's just not Rise. Rise is amazing. Um and so uh, I've been playing that again because there are parts of it I didn't do, some side stuff I never did, and I want to kind of see where the story goes. I did a quick recap on YouTube because I couldn't remember half of it. That game is cool, man. It's cool. I like it a lot. Anyway, not a huge amount to say there other than, you know, it's Tomb Raider. It's still good. I hope they have new games coming. The rumor is they do now that they got the, the IP back over at Crystal Dynamics and they don't have Square breathing down their neck about you know we know you sold several million copies but we're disappointed in you yeah they're i don't know what their standards are for this game or what they were at the time but by all accounts it sold plenty good for most studios so now that they're a little bit i would i mean i wouldn't call crystal dynamic independent but you know they can do more they have more wiggle room now so we'll see what they do um i also played the weirdest game of the week Maybe the month. <laughs> oh. Possibly the year. In fact, if it wasn't for that buckshot roulette game, this might be the weirdest thing I've played this year. And it still might because it's just weird. Uh, this game is called Arctic Eggs. And I saw, I saw it. this game on Steam and it got really, it had really good reviews. It was like very well rated. And I was like, oh, what's the, what's, and every time I looked at it, I went, what the shit is this? <laughs> no, right? It's very weird. So, this is a game. It's called Arctic Eggs, like I said. And its graphic style, again, is this weird throwback, chunky, ugly, glitchy uh, PS1 era kind of vibe. But also so there's mo there's some modern stuff going on that you couldn't do back then. <laughs> um, and it tries to tell a story. I'm not sure where it's going yet. I'm not that far. But it's overwhelmingly positive, like by nearly 100%, 98%. That's pretty freaking good. And you're walking around like this dystopic arctic i don't even know what to call it uh like a compound or a, a installation or something almost remi it reminds me of something you're trying to infiltrate in a james bond movie or something um but when you talk to people there's a little bit of story here and there but most of the time you're trying to find the people that are hungry and they'll tell you what they want and it's always eggs <laughs> and then but then something else so the lady might go uh, I love eggs, but I really like the smell of cigarettes. Could you mix my cigarette in with this egg? Which sounds terrible, but you'll start making an egg, and then the game turns into this egg-making simulator. You got a pan, and it's, it extends out in front of you, and you need to be very careful about flipping the eggs because you don't want to flip them off the thing. If you do, you have to start over. Sometimes you add a cigarette. Sometimes you add bacon. Sometimes you add um, pine cones for some reason. Um, they cook it at a different rate, so you kind of want to keep the eggs flipped, but the other stuff not, so you have to be real strategic. It's very physical. Why can't they just want them sunny side up? What is this? <laughs> I know, dude. That's exactly my question for these psycho people. That one, uh, this sort of screenshot, he, have, he has you put markers in with the egg, like like yellow Sharpie highlighter things. Um, 
Like, you're going to tell me that somebody <laughs> wants me to cook cigarettes with their egg, but they're going to get snooty about the fact that their egg didn't get flipped? You're 100% right about your consternation. Oh, there's beer, too. A whole bottle of beer. There's bugs. Uh, there's uh, bloat fish, regular fish. Uh, bloat, not bloat fish. What are they called? Puffer fish. Bullets. Puffer fish. That's what I meant. You put bullets on there. Fish. Anyway, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I haven't gotten that far yet, but you also, the chickens seem to know something. And and there's some kind of like weird mystery going on. Oh, not, you know. stop. The chickens <laughs> seem to know something. You can't drop that comment like it's a back of box feature and not explain what that well, means. Well, I don't entirely know yet. All I know is that the when I see some of the chickens, they look at me and I look at them <laughs> and there's just a vibe of like they know something. They're gonna they're <laughs> I don't I can't explain it. Also, some people are wearing like um, Fremen looking oxygen nose things. I don't know what's wrong with them. They're usually the ones that are smoking, so maybe that's all it is. Um, and I, I, I honestly, I can't make heads or tails of it, except for it is fun to try to get the eggs right. Um, uh-huh. This would be probably pretty good in VR, if I had to guess. It's not. Yeah, on, it it's not in VR. Like a VR game. Yeah. yeah. But visually. Very dystopic, very weird, very crunchy, very um, shitty on purpose, mm-hmm. which you can tell. It's a decision. It's an art decision, and I think it works well for what it is, and uh, it's very odd. So I don't. I have nothing else to say because I'm not that far, but I'm going to keep fiddling with it. Plays great on deck. Plays great on PC. It is weird as shit, and I got it on sale. It was only like 6 bucks. It's back up to 10 I think it's still worth it, though, at 10 but at six, it just seemed like a no-brainer. I'm like, well, I'm grabbing this. This looks stupid. Let's play this. <laughs> so I'll let you know. You know, if the, if it the, does look stupid. I will say. <laughs> if the uh, if if the chickens end up coughing up whatever their deal is, I'll let you know. If it, yeah, uh, I'm really know. curious about this world where the chickens know something. There's something. Apparently, a good recipe is ten cigarettes and an egg. Yeah, ten cigarettes and an egg. Bullets and an egg. Eggs are always involved, though. Almost 100 percent of the time. It's best I can right. tell anyway. It's got nice physics, like the the actual cooking physics are interesting. Um, and you're just kind of cooking it out, walking around on these scaffoldings. Guy will say, yes, I am hungry. I miss the eggs my father made, but when he was alive, zubba zubba. Put the cigarette in there too, and it's just it's just weird. Um, so yeah, I don't know who this is for, but uh, I'll take a bullet for the <laughs> team and let you that know how this good goes. Point. I like shit like this, though. Um, all right, that's Arctic Eggs available on Steam, and as far as I know, nobody, nowhere else yet. Uh, I also started a game called Fabledom, which came out in 1.0. This is a game I've had my eye on for a while. Decided to pull the trigger. It is purportedly a fantasy-based city builder. John demoed this, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. I did. I oh, played this a is demo one? of this oh. during one of the previews. I bought it because I really liked the demo, and I've yet to actually play it i think because it wasn't in full release and i just every now and then when i'm like oh i'm in the mood to play that and i open it up i'm like it's not even in full release yet what am i doing what am i gonna learn yeah learn a whole game just for them to change it no thank you yeah you'll end up on that chart (laughs) or something (laughs) yeah i'm putting myself on the chart right Um, now yeah it's cool though it's like uh i I forgot you played this so you know you probably know more than me because i have not had hardly any time in it but i i really like the aesthetic of it it's lighthearted and fun seeming uh, apparently it's real low stress this is not banished this is more like have fun building a city and see how it goes and oh you don't like that and you just redo that it's fine no yeah, but it's got some fairy tale vibes and there is like a you know like you are a prince or princess that you know you want to get married mm-hmm. like there is like a little dating fairy tale element to it as well um you know and then you're out building stuff yep Yep, but and it looks nice. Every now and then, someone from another kingdom comes by, and you can smooch them if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's a narrator that's always going. You know, the princess thought it was time to be, and they they really lean into the whole like fairy tale thing. It feels almost like a Disney Pixar kind of vibe to everything. Mm-hmm. And um, it was reviewing really well, and I just thought, you know what, let me just grab it. And I forgot you played it, so had I known that, I would have talked to you. Just to... well, yeah, you, you had great things to say about it. So yeah, I remember yeah, you liking I, it. I liked it. So I hearing that it's in 1.0, maybe I'll actually uh, maybe I'll actually try it. Yeah, I should get it installed. Definitely looking forward to more. I just haven't had time. Um, 
So there is that. I also played just a ton of the usuals. I, you know, farm together too is is a thing. I'm playing a lot of that. Um, I did this thing you can do in that game. Farm Together One did this as well, where you where you recycle your farm, mm -hmm. and it gives you back all the money, items, gold, diamonds, everything you've spent. You get it all back in the bank. It just clears all the land you own of not, so there's Some nothing there. Might say that recycling <laughs> your farm is exactly how they created Farm Together Two. <laughs> Oh, why didn't I see that coming? That's perfect. Um, there, are, <laughs> you're not wrong on a lot of levels. I'm not going to disagree with you, but it is. Uh, there's some stuff in there that is big time quality of life. Like there's an automatic mode where I just can harvest forever. Just it'll auto drive in one direction and just plop, 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 and it's very satisfying. But anyway, I did that so that because um, I, I don't think my my farm was very efficient. It was kind of pissing me off, so. I tried the recycle thing and now I'm able to like really think ahead about how am I going to lay out these rows of corn next to the tomatoes, next to the whatevers. And then when they're off season, what are those plots going to be used for? And how much, how much of these, uh, how this currency do I have for these little sprinklers I want to have on everything? And it's just like a, there's a whole planning aspect to it that I like a lot. So anyway, having now watched Furiosa, Scott, yeah. how badly do you want a wasteland management RTS where you have to balance sending trade caravans between Gastown, the Bullet Farm, and the Citadel to In make sure heartbeat. that everything is equivalent? Yeah. In a yeah. heartbeat. If they if he came out, if George Miller came out and said, Okay, the next video game attempt will be one of those, I would be so stoked. I would love that. Like I would love that. I mean, it would have to be they would have to really match the tone. But I love the 2015 open world Mad Max game for similar reasons. Like they really matched the tone for me and really nailed the world. And yeah, they could do anything and I'd, I'd play it. But but yeah, there aren't enough of those. There aren't enough wasteland style games, in my opinion, like that, that venture into like city builders and things like that. Um, so like even like this Fabledom game, if you told me Fabledom was, you know, had a skin for post-apocalyptic stuff, I'd. I just hang up on both of you now and go do that. Like that's how that's how into it I would be. Anyway, uh, that's what I played. There was one other thing I spent some time in. What was it? Uh, yeah, we need a post-apocalyptic city builder. God damn. I know, yeah, right? Every time one of your uh, trade convoys gets attacked, it just zooms in real tight and plays Junky XL. Dun, 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 <laughs> I love his music. And then you got to fight off cars coming at you. Yeah, and there are. I mean, there are a couple of city builder games that are sort of like this like end zone i think i own that um yeah end zone a world apart that's on steam how's that doing that's mostly positive that's kind of this or that's kind of what you're describing it's a little more banished adjacent in terms of difficulty but um my only problem with it is it just is like basic apocalypse it's like ah, oh, terrible shit happened we're all survivors it's like Frostpunk. it's like just survive and we'll try not to hurt each other. And what I want is crazy. I want insane ideas and concepts. Yeah. I want. Oh, you, know, you don't want like, oh, humanity's trying to pull together. Let's, yeah, you want like. I want uh, weird, weird like factions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what I want. I mean, the closest you'd have is the old Dune 2 strategy games, which aren't city builders, but. That's true. The new Dune uh, like, Spice Wars thing, I keep saying I'm going to get into that, but I'm on this chart. Yeah, that's, so. It's very, yeah, that's very. Speaking of strategy, it's very strategy. It's almost board gamey strategy in a way. You yeah. know, like the way it works. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah, I, I have it. it. It's totally fine for you know if that's what you're looking for. I guess what I want is something that's just more like God wants and, the option to let a dipshit take over one of his key resources to avoid war. Yeah, or or better yet, I want to send a convoy of you know a truck covered in war boys that I have to do that because there's. You know, there's bandits in the canyon and, you know, they got to fight that shit off. And if I do it wrong, they're going to get all that mother's milk for free. And then I got to go fight. You know, like there's just there's yeah. some concepts oh, in there. Yeah. Should milk be a primary resource? You know, there's always a top bar of like <laughs> your research points and your, yeah. your cultural points. Like, should the milk be one of the <laughs> one of the resources? Yeah. Why not? You got your you got your big ladies up there in the Citadel pumping milk out all day and. I said, go for it. So one of the one of the buildings you could make would be a. You'd have to manage your blood bags, so all your dudes yeah. with like universal donorship, and they're all hanging upside down in some room, and <laughs> you got like a 
uh, yeah. uh, organic mechanic working on all that shit. Like, I just love all that. All right. We're going to make this game? Let's I play this, this in a heartbeat. Anyway, that's I what I played. It. John, tell me what you did. You spent some time in your in ye old favorite Final Fantasy, it looks like. Hey, Final Fantasy fourteen has an expansion coming out soon. So I thought, hey, this would be a great time to finish the last expansion, which I hadn't done. Yeah. Uh, I oh, had, really? Okay. Yeah, I kind of stopped a few patches uh, away from the end. And uh, I was like, okay, you know what? It's time to it's time to get caught up. It's time to relearn how to play this video game. It's time to uh, do some raids, do some dungeons, uh, figure out how to set up my action bars again because I lost it once again. <laughs> and uh, so I've been playing a ton of Final Fantasy XIV, and I'm done. I I'm caught up. I'm ready for the expansion. I finished the raids. Uh, I'm all raided out now, and yeah. <laughs> uh, I finished the story. The story's set up. We're ready to go. I know where we're going. I know why we're going. I know what's coming. Yeah. Uh, my summer vacation is ready to begin, um, which I will say, as much as we joke summer vacation expansion and as much as they've leaned into that as well, the story setup is not hey, you're going to go have a summer vacation on a continent you've never been to before. <laughs> there is a story to it. Yeah. Uh, it's a new story, and uh, it, it's very intriguing. It's very exciting. They've introduced a new character that I think is great. Um, but, yeah, I'm having, a, I'm having a blast in Final Fantasy XIV. There was a lot of good content in there, um, and now it's just fun stuff. Now it's just playing with the other jobs. Not that it matters. I know I'm going to play Viper when it becomes added to the game. Like, two swords. Like, you, you had me at two swords. Um, and I actually think the new Pictomancer uh, class looks really cool, too. Um, kind of in spite of it. It's like, oh, you're going to fight with drawings! And I'm like, I don't know. Is that the one that's like, it's kind of painterly, right? They're hucking yeah. color around and all that, yeah. That looks neat. Yeah, it, it looks really cool. Yeah. And, so I, I think I'm gonna get into uh, I think I'm gonna get into all of that and uh, just having a blast with it. You know, Final Fantasy XIV. As much as I've logged in with purpose, um, the other day I logged in and was like, "All right, let's go." I know what I'm gonna do. I know what I'm looking for. Yeah. And I logged in, and first thing that I came into <laughs> was a whole like. Uh, band of Lollafells. <laughs> yeah. There's probably the best race in the game. There's probably like ten of them sitting there playing various instruments, all in sync, playing music. So I just sat and attended a little Lollafell concert for uh, a little bit, and then when I was done with that, off I went to find other adventures and other things to do. And that's the I think that's still the greatest strength to Final Fantasy XIV to me is that, yes, I really love the story. Um, I think it's had a, a fantastic, you know, main story quest to go through. But it's the fact that somehow, even though the world is more confined, because, and Scott, you've been playing, so you know this, like, it's not a giant open world like World of Warcraft, where you can just fly up and go wherever you want. Like, it's a lot more contained. Yeah. And... For some reason, despite all that, the fact that you can wander into a concert and then build your house and go to your apartment within your guild and mess around in there and see the people sitting in the, you know, the lobby to your guild house hanging out and talk with them, like, it feels more like a world, even though it's more limited in scope. It's kind of crazy like that. Hmm. Well, that's great. I saw you in there a bunch every time I checked Steam and I thought, oh, did something happen? And I was unaware that Final Fantasy was like on fire right now or something, but I didn't know hey, you didn't finish. I'm shocked. Back. I'm shocked by that that you hadn't finished the. Pre I thought I thought you had just cleaned house on all that stuff. I was for a while, but uh, the truth is, other games came out, got yeah. distracted, and you know it's there. Like it's like okay, well, it's waiting for me. I'll come back when I get to it, and um, you know they do a really good job of their patches have very good stop and start points. Almost every patch in Final Fantasy yeah. 
ends with them going, hey, you've been working hard. Take a little rest, and we'll come back to this in a little while. Like a week. Like almost every <laughs> patch. There's no cliffhanger. They've never ended a patch where your character's like, and you're in peril. Come back in a couple months after you're running around doing arbitrary things. Like, it always ties up. So it doesn't matter how crazy things are. They always They always end it with... Okay, well, it's going to take a while for us to deal with this, so you know we'll check back in when we're ready. So the game always gives you an excuse to go, you know, tool around and do whatever you want, and as a result, it has a real good feel of I'll come back when I feel it's important to come back. Sure. And uh, that's exactly what I did, and it was it was also really nice to be able to take it in big chunks. Like sometimes when you're getting just a patch at a time, yeah. you know you consume that content very quickly and you're like oh what do i do now yeah. um it's kind of nice to be able to come back and go oh, i'm just going to do quests and quests and quests and quests and i'll have plenty i can i can get done sure that's great what's the date is it june or Ju- july i can't remember now i think we're a month away i think it's very end of june for early access and then early july for uh regular release okay i'm uh i'm looking forward to that not as a player because I have too much to catch up on. I'll get there, maybe one day. Maybe, maybe. Just keep <laughs> going. Day. Just keep plugging yeah. away. It's I'm, a very long RPG. I'm currently sub to the damn thing, and I am playing it, but I'm just I, I don't see me catching up anytime soon. Because I'm playing it the way you told me to play it. I'm playing it like an RPG. And the problem with that is, you can't just like and wow, it's like ah, I'll skip thirty levels. Who cares? It doesn't work that way here. I mean, it does. You can pay for it. But it's not you're you're missing out on the point of the game, right? It's like you know, it's like buying Dragon Quest, you know, whatever, and going. But I don't want to play the game. I'd rather just skip to the end, please. Can we can we just do that? It just like it works for some, I guess. You know, there are definitely people who like the raids and stuff like that, and that's what they enjoy. And I, I think for them, that's a viable thing to do. I think raiding in Final Fantasy is the most fun I've had in raiding in any MMO ever. That's high praise. Um, I think their raids are extraordinarily good. Um, so I, I wouldn't fault anybody for going, you know what, I just like raids. I'm going to just skip and engage in that content. That's fine. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is more about the journey than the destination in general. So, well, there you have that's it. What, that's what you should enjoy. Nice. Bo, you've finished Mullet Mad Jack. I did. Yeah. How so was how that go? It was fun. It was really good. Yeah. It's action packed. It's very straightforward. You just, we talked about it last week. You have 10 seconds to live. You kill things, you get bonus seconds, and you got to keep shooting to make it through the level. It that's was awesome. good. I enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, and there's no, I mean, once you're done, you're done. There's no, like, um, I don't know. Uh, Yeah, there's an endless mode, and you can go back and always get better times and better scores, and there's harder difficulties where you get less points. But, you know, I made it through the campaign, and that's it was a good time. That's what I played. I feel like you got what you wanted out of it. Yeah, I mean, I might get back to it again, but there's lots of games to play, and, you know, it was fun. I I I really liked it. I really liked it. <laughs> you know, I just realized we're going to have people irritated that none of us tried. Um, well, especially John and I both have Game Pass, I think. Neither of us tried that Senua's Sacrifice or whatever the new one is. What's it called? I'm uh, going to be honest with you. I have no interest in it. I don't like. I don't really I play don't the first think, one. Uh, this I is not a condemnation of it. Yeah. It's just not a game for me in the same way that I'm not going to play, you know, a new basketball game. <laughs> like, it's just not... <laughs> It's yeah. not in the realm of interest for me. It's not, I'm not trying to condemn or say it's a bad game, but I'm not going to play it because I have zero interest in it. No, I get that. Bo, you played it in VR? I, don't, I, I don't played it that. in VR and I made it a fair way through, but I also didn't go back to it. Mm. So I'm loath to say it's a bad game. It actually had really had like production values. It has mechanics. But, you know, on that strategy level, it's it's pretty... Even like if you were to compare it to a Souls like or a third person action adventure game, I felt like it was it was sort of mid. It wasn't very deep, but it was a challenge. But you know, I don't know. Yeah. I mean a lot of people you know, really love like, it, but it's been divisive even since the first one. People forget that game was divisive with fans, and this one's short and beautiful and some people love it, and then I'm hearing people go, I can't I'm not paying fifty bucks for a five hour game and so there's all that going on with it plus it's just like you know another microsoft 
game. You don't want to, this is not a game you don't want to play for 100 hours. It's just not that kind of game. It's meant to be an experience, yeah. um, I think, because it's you have psychosis, like especially in VR, where you hear voices constantly while you're playing. It's good. Like the ex- I will not say a bad thing about it. It's good. Like yeah. this is a good game. It's creative. It has like they do try to push like the graphical tier to you know heighten immersion. I'm very happy they officially made a VR version of their own game, which I think more developers should do. I don't have a bad thing to say about it. I'm just also not kicking down doors to play this on launch day necessarily. Right. But right. I do want to play it. I have it wish listed, but you know, it's sure. And I think that's okay. If you're like, I'm not in the mood to know what it's like to have psychosis, then I'm like, yeah, just wait till you <laughs> wait till you. I don't know. It's again, it's this conversation of like certain games are like they hit their hype on launch window, and like I know that's how the business works for all these games. Yeah. But you're gonna get to a game when you get to a game, and this is a game for me that's like I'll get to it. When I gonna get to? <laughs> yeah, know, like it's not. This isn't uh, like I have to play immediately. Uh, kind of game to me. Yeah, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't either. I think that, I think you said it well. Uh, all right, Bo, what'd you play this week? What's going on uh, over there? So, well, I we talked about Mullet Mac. Oh yeah, we are talking about Mullet Mac. Yes, yeah, so, or Mullet but, Mac. But uh, I, I play the Usual Suspects. I played WoW. I play StarCraft. <laughs> I've played Heroes of the. I've been playing Heroes of the Storm again. I've had fun in Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, just a Blizzard gamer again. <laughs> the sexual <laughs> harassment. Uh, uh, the airplane has flown by. <laughs> just just, full, in, just yeah. full on playing Blizzard games again. Sure. Uh, Bobby Cockdick is gone. <laughs> uh, we got Cockdick. We got <laughs> we got Microsoft in the house. Who knows if that's. I feel like the Microsoft is going to be a death touch, but you know uh, it's probably better than what was happening previously. So I'm going to remain optim, optimus prime for the future. Sure. <laughs> what word am I like? Optimistic. Oh boy, optimistic. This is why we usually record earlier. Than yeah, this. we're a couple and hours late. Ten, than ten, usual. my time. The brain powers. <laughs> sure. Man. Yeah, I made it worse by uh, getting back late. Apologies again. Uh, it's okay. If that's what Team Jumble Force is all about. Team but, Jumble um, Force. You got to do what you can to keep our esport alive. So. Jumble Force right. Unite. Yeah. Esports of using normal language. Uh, <laughs> can you do it? Um, <laughs> can you? Uh, uh, no, so, you know, not much to say there. We're still raiding Sunken Temple. I'm loving Co-op Commander still and, and, and Heroes of the Storm. Uh, it's fun. It's you're a fun having a bit of a, a you're having a Blizzard game. week. And you, did you Wait. even, did you poke into the Diablo uh, thing at all? N- no, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm so burnt. I, I climbed my mountain. I'm on the statue. I don't gotta play it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're playing Diablo Five, probably. <laughs> I'm like nah, X pack. I mean, the loot reborn sounds great and all, but it's not a like. I'm not gonna play. Uh, you know, how three like twenty four hours worth to get to level one hundred just to check out the items. Maybe at least season five. You mm, know what I mean? Mm, like, yeah. I hear good things. I'm glad people are checking it out and stuff, but I just, I'd rather play V Rising. There's other stuff to do. When I think about like, what are the list of things you want to do? I'd rather play StarCraft, you know? Like, sure, so, sure. That's what it is. Yeah, we got to pr- um, prioritize. Man, if you were on that chart, we wouldn't be talking about nine years of drop. You'd be like keeping it alive. <laughs> it would be steady. Uh, yeah. I like, str- I like strategy games. I try not to be a dick, but I do end up being a dick about these you know, I'm just like, why are you playing that game? Play a game that's good, you know, it gets the, some strategy in there. But, you know. Sure. That's that's not nice. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, play more strategy games. Um, but uh, my week got screwed over royally. <laughs> yeah, let's talk <laughs> so about that, your that's weird. That's the first half yeah. of the week. I got, I got, I, I fell victim to fishing attempt. Uh, that's what happened. And, At first I um, went, oh, ba- I, let me say this real quick. At first when I heard about this, my initial reaction was, crap he was up till 2 a.m or something and some jerk in the chat it's not that at all this thing's like legit and scary it was four in the afternoon i was i was a little tired i was also doing other stuff um like i was working basically i'm just oh, trying not okay. to okay i was working <laughs> but like, he said other stuff in such a like wink wink nudge, no, I was nudge try, kind I'm of way not, like, i'm trying not to be like too like hey God, you know because i am working and yeah, i was yeah. working sure i was working diligently but i had my pc open and that you know pinged me and i'm just i'm gonna out the account because i still haven't been able to get a hold of the person but discorax he's an employee uh, used to work at blizzard he now works at dream haven we've mm-hmm. talked to blizzcon 
your account, someone's on your, some Russian, I assume they're Russian because that's where everything points to, is on your account fishing people. <laughs> that's why I trusted it. I, mean, I haven't talked to him in a few years. He's like, yo. And I'm like, oh, hey, you know. Hey, he's a going? great guy. We've all I'm had always, interactions with him. I'm always going nice. to like say hi to the people who work at Dreamhaven because I'm very curious. I'm not going to say it on the show. I'm very curious what you guys are working on. And I thought, oh, maybe maybe it'll be a fun conversation. You know, whatever. I wasn't expecting anything. But he goes, yo. And then he's like, uh, I'm like, hey, man, how's it going? And he's like, could you vote for my friends in the CS2 student tourney? They need three votes to play. And I'm like, is there a link or is it in the CS2 client? Sure, I'll do that for you, bud. Right. And then I get sent this link. And then I don't. I forget because I'm working. So I ignored it for a few hours. Like I forgot. <laughs> I was actually being kind of a dick because I said, yeah, I'll do this thing. And then left. Uh, yeah. Also no, also known as a Scott Johnson. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I want to tell you something really cool. All right, go for it. Yeah. I three admit. days later. I don't remember what it was. I cop to it. I do that all the time. I don't know. I just lose track and I forget. But anyway, yeah, sorry. I, I was doing, I pulled a Scott Johnson. I said, yeah, I'll totally help you. And then like, <laughs> The thing is, you're happy to help. It just you forget. Yeah, it's just I was busy. Forget. I'm working. Yeah, you had stuff going on. And then and then I finally went back, and then it's like, uh, you know, and then there was a mother message. Can you do it now? It's just that the vote might end. I was like, oh shit! I said I'd help this guy. It's been like three hours. So I click on the link. It's like some esports page. I'm not going to say the site. I don't want to direct anything to it. And it's like you you got to log into Steam to vote. And you know you get the Steam credential page. You've seen it on Steam apps and stuff sure. when you're on a third party site. You yeah. log in using Steam. So username, password, Steam Guard approved. And then I go, what's this about England on the page? And then I, my email pops up. I check my email, and it's like, oh, you got to log in from Russia. Oh shit! You know, is this you? And I was like, oh shit! And then I looked at the website and I did a quick Google search. Uh, you know, who is uh, with the domain? Well, the domain's registered the day before. Oh. I'm like, uh, uh yeah. all the, in the, it's an RU registrar. And I'm like, oh, shit, shit, shit. I, I catch it, like, within seconds. Like, I, I logged in. Oh, and what happened was the site says uh, it's going to take 24 hours yeah. for you to log in, for, for an administrator to approve your account. So I couldn't vote. Yeah. So I think the next logical step in the fish is to report back to the attacker and say, like, I tried to log in, but it said to wait 24 hours. I can't vote for your team. And then they know that's a signal that something's happening. Yeah. So I didn't respond further. I went to, you know, Steam Guard and, um, or the Steam account system. I uh, revoked access to all accounts, changed my password. Uh, Steam Guard's pretty good, and there's ways to check your site. I also checked my web API. Your Steam account has a web API that people can actually um, use while you're on your account, but they can log in remotely to your account. I'm not 100% sure how it works, but oh, uh, you got to like make that. sure your API key is clear and doesn't have one because that also means someone might have backdoor access to your Steam account. And they can buy things and trade them for money. Jeez. Um, so I locked it down, but I went to a site that it basically has internet herpes, right? Like, I, God knows what's <laughs> on my system. I start running <laughs> malware scans, and I'm like, I'm just not going to feel safe on my computer anymore. So disconnected from the internet, uh, start moving things to my backup external X. I have like 200 gigabytes of sound loops and files and shit. And I'm just like, great. It's going to take me three hours. So I start moving that stuff. <laughs> I start hitting my phone and start changing my pat. I have 200 passwords. Yeah. Like, like it has been a long and excruciating affair going to every one of my sites and changing the password and then, then reformatting. By the way, I'm still on Windows 10, but holy cow, do they ask your permission for a lot of stuff these days. Oh, yeah. Also, they auto-install OneNote. So I'm trying to put like a list, like I'm just writing a list of stuff I need to install, and it's sharing it to the cloud immediately. Like, don't install that shit by default. Like, I'm trying to protect my PC. Microsoft, because with this whole cold pilot thing, they're off the deep end with this stuff. It's really annoying what they're doing. Mm. And a reinstall of Windows 10 in 2024 is a horrifying experience. They're asking permissions for all kinds of sharing stuff, but they don't ask permissions for things like AI reading your computer and copying a copy of all their files. I had to uninstall OneNote. I had to do all this stuff. Anyways, I've been reformatting and purifying my computer uh, Protoss style. Yeah. And uh, that took, it's taken up like two full days for me. Oh my gosh. It's um, a lot. Just dude. like babysitting it, do, you know, getting things back to where I need it. I'm still not done, but I, you know, I've got enough in place where I can do things again. But, yeah. um, uh, all that to say, like, I take my computer security very seriously. So 
uh, I'm not just going to chill and have my bank account emptied while I, you know, don't do anything about it. So it was format time for me. And Ryan, uh, Discorax, or if someone's listening who knows him or can reach him or just say, like, I tried Garrett and Kyle. I thought maybe they knew the, him because we talked about their shows for a bit. I'm pretty sure he's been a listener for Into the Nexus, Grinding Gear, and other stuff. I know he done. listens to Core. It's been a while since I yeah. talked to him, but it's been, I think he does. Yeah, like, I talked to him for a while. He's a nice guy. I'm like, there's no way he did that, like, tried to fish me. Like, someone's on his account. I think he left X when Elon took over because I'm we're mutuals on there, and I DM'd him, but haven't heard back. Yeah. Uh, there, there's... There's a there's a, a Fisher on your account, Mr. Robots. <laughs> like, yeah. secure your accounts, man. I don't know to what extent you've been um, you've been made vulnerable, but it sucks. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm not mad at you or anything, but I did lose two days to you know, cleaning my system, purging uh, all this crap. So. Yeah, I'm worried about it that. It can happen guy. in the blink of an eye, man. Yeah, I'm worried so, about that guy and his stuff's all compromised now. I know. Right, right. So I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm being overly like, like cautious, right? Like yeah. maybe it's just the Steam account they have compromised. But still, I just I didn't. I wish I would have caught it. It so looks like a phishing attempt now that I look at it. But like, geez, yeah. I do use an authenticator as well. Gershwin's asking. I have Microsoft authentication. And I've got Steam authentication. Like I've got authenticators everywhere. An authenticator needs to be. Even my Twitch does all that stuff. Even my bank accounts have authentication two factor as well. So like, but I just the the thought that there's a root kit or something that uh, I don't know what I clicked on. I have I have like I have no sense of what it might have installed or uninstalled. And formatting is just a safer way to be sure. Yeah. Um, and even then, it's still technically possible for yeah. stuff to survive that, but. I don't. I don't think it was that bad, so I'm feeling okay. Yeah, I don't think you got that far in, probably. But I'm yeah. really bummed you had to deal with it. That sucks. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like not the end of the world. It's just a pain in the ass. But yeah. still, yeah. You know. No fun to work with that. That's that's my that's the game I played. <laughs> was <for> my, <laughs> was reset your PC game. I was gonna say, uh, man, this this Elden Ring DLC is crazy. I can't believe the stuff they make you do. But nope, just Bo fighting the man. <laughs> yeah, and I know that a, a yeah reformat not gonna wipe out a rootkit, but uh, there's I, you know, I've ran, I've obviously ran <laughs> like uh, scanners after, like I'm doing everything. Uh, we're good. Yeah, you've done all you can do. What else can you do? You know, like you've done all you well, can do. I guess you could go burn your computer and buy a new one, but that's not really. In the <laughs> the well, I can burn blow the hard up. drive. I can, you know, yeah, take the hard drive out and get a yeah, new one. That's that true. Would be, that's pretty extreme. I'm pretty sure I'm okay, though. I'm pretty sure I'm okay. If you use an authenticator for password, you're probably not so worried about passwords because you're probably using some kind of authenticator, right? For all that, like two factor or something for all your passwords? I two factor everything where it's available. Yeah. I change passwords frequently. And I use very complex complex pattern. Like I, I'm not really worried about those compromises. And there's, there's a lot of tools to to see your login histories and all those places. Mm. Like I'm not so much worried about what's on my computer. You want to see my tax returns? I guess. Like, yeah, I'll see them. Maybe they'll. But like, <laughs> wait, Canada it's... Canada has tax return. I guess they would. Why wouldn't they? Of course yeah. they do. Something like yeah, it. We do we do file income tax every year. Yours are easy yeah. though. You don't you don't jump through the hoops we do, right? You just send them the thirty percent. I think the... it's no, it's complicated, <laughs> but mine, Bose is easy. Like I don't own shit and uh I do do the bare minimum and you know. Yeah. Here's the money I made, here's what you're taking off. I'm not like a homeowner's credit and you know, whatever else and all that shit. You don't have Trudeau banging on your door every couple of days going, Hey, you owe me five bucks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it was just a fish and I didn't <laughs> install anything. I think the next step in the game was because I have the chat log because yeah. he responded after after two hours. He, he went and with a question mark because I never got back to him because I pulled a full Scott Johnson. This was a hostile Scott Johnson. This was with mm. intent. I know. The kind. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not responding to you because if I let you know you're there, it's going to cause, you know, cause alarm. Right. I'm going to try and get a hold of Ryan Discorax. Check yeah. your account and, and fix it, because uh, somebody in Russia or pretending to, or, you know, somebody in Russia has like got a hold of your account. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Oh man, well. And if that was you, I'm curious to know what the deal was. That I just do this all in error, but I'm pretty sure the registrar was true about the site. So, you know, what if the I next, what if the next game at uh, Dreamhaven is about? It's like a hacking simulator, and they're just trying it out. You know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm, I'm the QA, unwitting QA. Yeah, you're there. the guy. You're the guinea pig. You just didn't know it. Yeah. Well, anyway, hopefully that all sorts itself out. And we hear back from him. That would be nice. Pretty sure he still listens, so yes. we should hear back. Uh, all right. Well, there you go. Let's dive into some news that we didn't cover yet. Like this. Wait, normally we take a break, don't we? Why am we're, I doing uh, that? We're really... I was like, okay, no, I'm off my shortening the yeah. show we, we can sh- We can short break it, but... Uh, yeah, I'm, ro- I'm <laughs> off my rocker here. Let's take our break. When we come back from the break, we'll do more. <laughs> I, I no, you know what? Don't go see a three-hour movie before you come to a podcast. For real, <laughs> especially one that is such an assault on the senses. It's just too much. I shouldn't have done it. Anyway, uh, I would, I could have seen it tomorrow. What was I doing? Anyway, that'll uh, only be about five minutes, everybody. So come on back now. You hear? All right. All right. Let's take a print. We're unpaused. All right. Hey, everybody. We're back. Welcome back to the show. We're gonna do a dear Martha. I know. Now I know what we're doing. All right. Uh, and part of that includes having a dear Martha. And John, uh, I guess we just need to throw something at you, don't we? Um, yeah, just think of uh, just think of whatever and how, send it my way. How about um, you know all the everyone is always afraid that Microsoft's going to lay off some other dev they already bought and they're going to shut another studio. So what if you are out there in the field and you're just nervous that the the axe is going to come down? You know. And, and your favorite studio, the one you work at, or whatever. What do you think of that? Okay. We All can right. figure something out around that. Sure. All right. Yeah. We're going to let it fly then. Here we go. In three, whoops, I'm on the wrong tab. Three, two, one. My dearest Martha, I write to you in a state of alarmed concern. It has come to my attention, Martha, that perhaps I am not as secure in my job as I thought I might be. We all sat here when big Microsoft purchased our studio and felt pretty good about it. After all, who has more money than Microsoft? Not God. (laughs) True. (laughs) So naturally, I thought my job would be quite secure and safe, but I gotta tell you, my peers are falling extraordinarily fast, and my concern has started to rise. Now, sure, obviously Microsoft has advantages that we didn't see under someone like, say, Bobby Kotick. I mean, he hasn't threatened to kill any secretaries recently. (laughs) Phil Spencer didn't come over in a yacht and uh, shit on somebody's desk publicly and laugh about monetizing it. But at the same time, Martha, I've just got this weird feeling that all might not be well. I thought maybe we put some stuff on Game Pass. That seems popular, but it turns out Game Pass is not a guaranteed deal, as we may have been led to believe. I don't want to get you too concerned, Martha, but I got followed home last night (laughs) by two men. One in a Hexen shirt and the other wearing a Master Chief helmet. (laughs) I don't want to say this is a sign, Martha, but they stood outside for 20 minutes and they wrote down something in a piece of paper. And then they asked their AI to send it to fit to P Spencer at Microsoft.com. That's not a sign, Martha. I don't know what is. Pray for me, Martha, for this may be the last letter I write to you, unless someone finds a way to, I don't know, maybe distract Phil by nuking his Fallout 76 town (laughs) once again. (laughs) Yours in this life and the next. P. Daddy 35. (laughs) P. Daddy 35. (laughs) Oh my gosh. So wait, Phil Spencer's wearing both the helmet and wearing the tech, the Hexen shirt. I don't know. It's hard to say. You know, he's wearing a helmet, I guess. I got the impression it was two men, one with the Hexen shirt, one with the Master Chief helmet. Oh, yeah. t- oh, okay. Well, then that's even scarier. I'm glad you cleared that hurdle, and hopefully the future is bright. I don't know who the second guy is. That was amazing. Okay, now for real, we do some extra news. <laughs> The internet sort of thought Microsoft was going to try and buy Valve for some reason. Here's the deal. 
I looked it up. This should have been the Dear Martha, because this isn't worth the news record. It really isn't. Is. <laughs> it really isn't. There's an old document from 2020. It's the one that we all are familiar with when Microsoft was trying to buy everyone, including Nintendo. Uh, there was no interest. It didn't go any further. This got resurfaced, and then everybody ran with headlines that Microsoft's about to make a huge offer on Valve and Steam, and they, they're not. Let me tell you right now, this is 100% a non-story. This isn't happening. I can guarantee you this will never happen. And not not during Gabe Newell's lifetime will this happen, okay? If it happens after that, you know, all bets are off. But there's no way in hell this was ever going to be true. Uh, so there, take that. I mean, I, I had a funny thought, though, in relation to this. I, 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 all the smut on the store made sense to me suddenly. Mm. Because... <laughs> Yeah, because like you know, if you're highly corporate, not that there aren't corporate adult entertainment industries, but many companies shy away from that vertical. Right, right, and it's like oh, almost like what? Like, Valve's not going to get bought by Disney if they've got like if everyone's oh. like, man, we want to buy Valve. So you, I'm yeah. like, you want to buy Valve, and then Gabe just takes a big shit on the product. Do you want to buy it now? Do you mm -hmm. want to buy it now? You know, like it's a little. What's the word? It's uh. Anathema? Is that the word? I don't is that know. the word? It's just like, it's, whatever the word is, it's just like it's putting, it's, it's, it's what happens. It's Microsoft what, it's, buys Valve tomorrow. Right. What happens to Fresh Girls? <laughs> 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 is Microsoft now in the sale of games such as Being a Dick and Fresh Girls and uh, what was it? There's some uh, Sexy that, Hitler or whatever. Sexy Hitler 1 and yeah. 2 and all that. Yeah, and like, like, all, like whoever buys it now has to deal with Orc uh, massage. that. Yeah. Yeah, Orc Massage, Scarlet Orc Maiden. Massage, yeah. Here's the thing, though. Like, in Disney's case, in. Disney even found a way. Here's how they did it in the 80s. They set up a second studio called Hollywood Pictures. Nobody knew it was Disney, and they made movies with boobies in it. And then now they own Hulu, so Disney has Hulu for all the boobies and the swears and the wieners, and then they just got Disney for the kids. Uh, and never the twain shall meet. Although now they're all yeah. kind of integrated, and I guess yeah, they're to... all there now. If your uh, account's open to it, all of a sudden you open there's... it and you're like, you know, you see poor things right up front. <laughs> but uh, like, listen, so, listen I mean... how much he likes cocaine, <laughs> like right on Disney there's, Plus. There's some unhinged people in the movie space for sure, but they're not unhinged like the gamer space. I mean, just look at the past week in Stellar Blade, right? I mean, it's yeah. like you're it's. If Disney comes in and put takes it off Valve and puts it on some other store, like I don't know, I just yeah, I don't, and like there's some, you know, it, the the porn games are really grody. Like it's not it's not just like oh here's some adult content. It's no, like, they're hardcore. Uh, there's one yeah. where it's like there's this, there's a giant naked. It's a space shoot 'em up that happens over a giant naked woman. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called. Well, yeah, I mean, if one. there's a giant like, naked woman, that's where all the space shoot 'em ups would happen. That's where the shmups right. would happen. Simply exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I, I don't know. I just I feel like it was just a thought. I don't know if it's they were never going to. It just was never going to happen. Like, the whole thing. This is This story never gonna was. I was shocked that so many people talked about it. If you believed this story. Then I I don't know I got a basketball team I need you to vote for or something like, I don't, <laughs> what? don't, I don't fish don't. people Josh no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to tell you I love that if you it's like I've got a floor a, 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 what is it it's usually like oceanfront property in Florida to sell you but in your case I have a basketball team to sell you that's amazing um, all right look here's the here's the other thing I would say part of he left Microsoft back in the day. And started Valve as screw you money for Microsoft because Microsoft did not want to do what he wanted to do with gaming. So he bolted and he started Valve and he made Half-Life and did all the things they've done since. There's no way they get back in bed with them ever. This is yeah. not a chance. Plus, he makes so much. He doesn't need the money. He rolls in money. He sleeps in money. He is made of money. Like that company I, I heard is a wash. made entirely out of Steam decks. All that. All they do Steam decks and knives. They print like money the at, at Steam. Iron Throne. They just print right. money every day. So why would they even consider this? Like everyone's like, this would be so bad for the bit. I'm like, oh, well, good because it's not happening. You bunch of weirdos, quit complaining about a thing that'll never happen. There, there might come a day. There might come a day. I'll be dead. Maybe. They do say never say yeah. never, but it the 
It ain't happening. But then you know, Microsoft gonna will happen. be the seller of fresh girls. So, mm. you know, but. This isn't gonna happen while Gabe is in charge. No, pretty Gabe, much a guarantee. Gabe is like, there's a reason all the Steam boxes were Linux machines. You guys, he yeah. doesn't like Microsoft at all. No, there's a reason why the Steam Deck isn't based on Windows and it's based on Proton. Proton's a spite OS. It's a spite translation layer. <laughs> it's to make it so that you can run Windows shit on Linux. <laughs> Like, like everything they do. So yeah, it's just whatever. People love controversy, and there was nothing. Uh, here's a fun one: CEO of Arrowhead, the folks behind Helldivers Two, steps down and is going to focus more on Helldivers Two and its community. So he doesn't want to be in charge anymore. He wants to like do cool shit with the game. So yeah, he wants to be involved in the game. Uh, so the controversy here is the guy who they hired, who he vouched for as a good friend and a smart guy. Is the CEO of that game company with a P you can never remember? Uh, oh, Paradox? Paradox? I remember it now. Paradox. Now I remember. Who, like, <laughs> Paradox is notorious for having 500,000 DLCs for every game and being, uh, they're not loved for their monetization practices. And this guy is the steward of such things. Mm. Um, it looks like, optics wise, he's going to be a better fit for interfacing with Sony. Yeah. Which might mean. More DLC. We're gonna see some. We're gonna see some headlines in the future. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, we'll uh, see what it's gonna be. It's a case of like the the current guy was so beloved. He's saying he vouches for him. He's still with the company. I I'm not gonna immediately jump on the. That's it. This is gonna be another paradox bandwagon. Like, sure. I I think that there's definitely a concern and a thing. Like, boy, I hope this doesn't turn into paradox. You can have that conversation. You know, where it's like, do you want to buy all the DLC? Well, how much is that? $379. Oh, Woo. no, I guess I don't. No. Um, but it's still Arrowhead. It's a different company. The CEO, who has had great business practices, you know, we made the joke when we first started playing Helldivers to $20 best value, not $100 best value. Like, that it tends to be very fair and reasonable. And... We'll have to see, but I think they've at least earned the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I agree. Uh, if you'd like to know how much Paradox does with the LC, I found a fun little list here. of This is just a site that says, here are the best 11 Stellaris DLCs. It's insane. And that's out of, I don't Stellaris know how many. crazy. I love Stellaris, and I'm at a point where I'm like, I mean, I'm over the game. Can you release a new one? Like, <laughs> yeah, hurry up, make like, a new one. What are you doing? That? Over there. What the hell's going on here? The, how, uh, all DLC right now is five hundred and seven dollars and seventy five cents Canadian. That's crazy. Not, not including the base game. That's the DLC. And like, there's some free ones in there, like anniversary portraits and cosmic storms. <laughs> yeah, get them anniversary portraits. But yeah. there, and I don't think you need to buy them all. I think it's also like the fact is it's a little confusing. There's some expansion passes in here. Maybe it's more like four hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the soundtrack I don't need for ten bucks. I don't need the Infinite Frontiers ebook for ten bucks. So yeah, maybe about four hundred dollars Canadian, but still, it's like, wow, milk milk your games much? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, Jesus, it's, a, yeah. it's crazy. And like, so, if you check out the reviews on some of them, some of them are like the absolute minimum amount of effort was put into this DLC. Like, people, customers are not they're not like, oh my god, yes, new content. It's like, what is this like? lackluster shit yeah <laughs> like, the the yeah. universalis four games like that just miles of dlc i can't make heads or tails tails of it and i bought the it went on extreme sale the the base game yeah. and i've never played it i thought i like those kind of games and i grabbed it and then it says something like here's all the rest of the shit you could include and i'm like that's like three pages of this what am i what are you even doing to me i'm not gonna look at that so yeah oh crusader yeah. kings 3 yeah. has a bunch of dlc i didn't know that and yeah, it has a ton. That's notorious. Like, the second one, I think, is notorious for how much it has. And they've had other missteps. The Star Trek Infinite, which was supposed to be Stellaris, but Star Trek, was yeah. like, yeah, ne- like review bomb. Like, it, there, people are like, what is this trash? Like, they they did not put any effort into it. So it's like Paradox has made good has made good content, has like good releases, but mm-hmm. like particularly when it comes to DLC or just these offshoots, putting low effort into some of these things um and then basically abandoning uh, products if they're not going to be a source of uh, revenue in this way i don't know it's just he's the guy he's the guy that under his stewardship it behaves this way so 
I'm pretty sure this is this is a subject that uh, as soon as a move gets made, where it's like, yep. So actually, Sony, you're not gonna have to make an account, but I don't know. They're gonna do something. I I, I, I can't even imagine what it might be. I can't predict the future, but uh, you know, it's gonna be something. Yeah. It pretty much guaranteed. I mean, I may end up eating my words. You're not wrong. Paradox has a reputation. It's an earned reputation. But in my opinion, at this stage, until I have reason to believe otherwise, this is someone from Paradox coming to Arrowhead. This is not like Arrowhead being acquired by Paradox or anything like that. Yeah. And I, I think that I'm willing to give good faith to that point. Yeah. So that's that's kind of where I'm at. But we'll see. I mean, like it's. It's real simple. You do the same thing you did with the original uh, Helldivers 2 controversy. If it goes away you don't like, get out. Yep. Let them know and get out. And uh, I don't know if it will change anything, but it sends the message. So Agreed. Mm. Uh, by the way, I went to Steam just real quick to look at those DLCs, and I'd forgotten the Warhammer Skulls Festival of Video Games thing was going on. Oh, yeah. Um, they finally have a listing for uh, Space Marine 2. And that reminded me that I read that Tom Willits, who worked at uh, on Doom, Doom 2, like was it there at id Software for all their big releases, all the Quakes and everything, and has done a bunch of stuff since. He's had hands-on with this game, and he was raving. He says, look, I'm an expert in my career in action video games. I have never seen a game do it as well as this game is doing it. Like, it was some high praise. I cannot wait yes. for this effing game, dude. Yes, well, September 9th, 2024. Oh, I'm so Mark's calendar. Sucks. A three-player, three-player co-op, three-player co-op campaign, three-player co-op missions mm-hmm. is made for core. They said, you know, core has three hosts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, we got these guys have to play it. I cannot wait. Play it. So excited! And then they announced yeah. Bolt Gun, Bolt Gun Forges of Corruption looks really great. The sequel to that, Mechanicus Two. Oh, I love the first Mechanicus. Mechanicus. Yeah, there's some good stuff coming, man. Yeah. Oh, and Speed Freaks will finally be out of. Wherever it is right now, I, I played that little open beta thing they had, and I loved it. It was basically Warhammer. Um, uh, what's the what's the what's the shoot? What's the game where you're fighting cars on the PlayStation? Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal. Shit. It was basically was like Jumble, g- Jumble Force. Goal. <laughs> Jumble, Jumble Force. Force. Jumble Force Two. Uh, catch it. Anyway, oh, and I guess uh, Gladius is currently free, and and you keep it. Gladius is yeah, awesome. so that's and another course, one of those yeah. games with a lot of DLC, though. I was like, oh, that's awesome, a free game. And then I w- loaded up the store page, and yeah. it's like, do you want the additional content for it? How yeah. much is that? Over $100. Yeah, that's <laughs> nothing. One, $168.37 Canadian. Yeah, it's worth getting that. Just The base game's good. I, I recommend it. It's very, very good. Uh, well, anyway... I like Warhammer. Um, moving on to this story. Fortnite gets Wasteland season and weirdly has zero Mad Max content, but Fallout and Magneto are in there. Uh, yeah. Today we thought we were going to... Yeah, I was like... So yesterday is when I wrote this news story and I, I wrote probably going to have a Furiosa or Mad Max tie-in mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow. Well, now, tomorrow is today and we know. And for some reason, the new... <laughs> wasteland themed season of fall of uh, Fortnite yeah. contains no mad max <laughs> you know the season that launched on the same date as furios <laughs> yeah. yeah uh has zero mad max content but fallout power armor is in there as is uh wasteland magneto coming soon for yeah some reason. What the hell? Re- reinforces how i feel about them is just well if we can't secure a deal we'll rip off and you know we'll capitalize on it either way it yeah. does feel to me here's where i'm gonna put my tinfoil hat on oh shit it does feel like maybe an attempt was made and perhaps agreements could not be reached because there is some content in here that feels like it would be in the position where you would want like a big Mad Max tie in, mm-hmm. like as far as the battle pass positioning, yeah. like it's like high up on the battle pass, which is usually where you put the, you know, like when they did the Transformers tie in, that's where Optimus Prime went, you know, right. you put them high up on the battle pass, you get people going through the whole thing. 
and like the character that's currently at the top of the battle pass is not a very interesting skin <laughs> it's not really like something worth chasing i mean maybe it's really in the weeds for fortnite people and they're excited about it but like it it wasn't sending me uh over the hill with interest and it feels like maybe that was meant to be furiosa or something like that and they couldn't they get a couldn't deal done make it happen yeah, yeah i could see that there's a lot of rumblings right now that they fumbled it a little bit not having another game or something um ready for this launch the way that they did in 2015 but oh yeah this guy looks like a morton joe dude does he <laughs> Show him, put yeah. a link it put Hang put on. it in the thing oh right that's the I'm guy that's at the top it. i think i'm thinking about something else not quite the top it, but yeah that guy does look overwhelm like morton joe megalodon yeah. is what they yeah. call this guy well this is totally not a ripoff it's but like, it's um, it's it's different enough but yeah. i mean the engine mouth i mean come on like yeah, yeah there's a guy in Hello. the battle pass that looks like max there's a there's a lady that clearly like could very easily be subbed in for furiosa this guy definitely looks like it could be an immortan joe not that they would have given like all of that its attention but like it it definitely feels like this is a missed opportunity and uh oh, yeah, a little disappointed guy. by it like i was excited to see the fallout armor in there like it's gonna be crazy to run around as a fallout character in a game that works yeah. but that's <laughs> <laughs> that'll be like a new experience Games work that'll be fine. fun they're fine the only complaint i would have is they only put one kind of power armor in it and then multiple colors of the same power armor been nice if there were a couple of all you know versions or something there are alternate versions of the power armor. are there they're not just color yeah oh uh i thought it was just it's color. hard to say like they are kind of reskins but it's not just color like they will put sometimes textures on them and stuff like that we'll see some of that stuff gets obscured like there's the initial battle pass then there's bonus pages they hide some of that then there's quest stuff they hide some of that until later in the season because you can't you literally can't get it yet anyway mm -hmm. um so we'll we'll have to see it i mean as far as theming though goes like yeah it's mad maxi as hell it's got a big focus on car combat you can just drive through these boxes and it puts, you know, like war rig type stuff on your car so that you can fight that way. Like they're definitely leaning into it. They've got the Nitro Dome, which might as well be the Thunder Dome. Like they've really gone all out with it. So it's cool, but, you know, I just saw Furiosa. Like that's what I want to, that's what I want to do. I don't want your Fortnite flavor. We have Mad Max at home. <laughs> <laughs> Fortnite flavored Mad Max. Yeah, that sounds yeah. terrible. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Uh, George Miller mentioned this earlier in pre-show. Maybe uh, he wants Kojima, Hideo Kojima, to make a Mad Max game. Says he wasn't as big a fan of the Avalanche game. It wasn't like rude about it, but he was sort of like, oh, "What? Well, it didn't." You know, we weren't super thrilled. I still can't tell if it's because they just weren't happy with the sales. Because apparently they had DLC done and dusted. That just never got released because they were so like, oh, sales aren't good enough. But since then, that thing has got like long life. It is still at overwhelmingly positive on Steam. There is no reason that game shouldn't have got more love than it did. And it's the first. I open mean, world ironically, game. it's Kojima's fault. Now he wants him to make it. Yeah, make the game. It's sort of Kojima's fault because those games came out right next to each other, and I. I was in the camp that was like yelling at you when you're like, I'm playing Mad Max. I'm like, would you play Metal Gear Solid remember, Five, the yeah. good one of these games that yeah. came out? Yeah, and, and I and I still stand. I still say both games are amazing, but people slept on that Mad Max game, and it's freaking rad. I should try it. It's, it's so good. It's and dusty, I, and I beat it. I beat I that effing it. game. It's very dusty. It's very deserty. You ain't getting no green place in there. Okay. <laughs> but uh I, I can look for it scott i'm gonna drive until i find it It had that crunchy batman arkham asylum combat hand-to-hand -hand stuff it. i should install this you should just play that shit I, it's yeah. the first it's the first open world game i, I basically 100 percent it. i think there might be some achievements i didn't get but i got i unlocked and said and did everything i love that game oh if they had a real I, sequel I, to that i'd be stoked i'd be i'd be out I of my mind I, I don't think this can't i don't 
I think it's to be careful what you wish for. I mean, he genuinely said he wanted Kojima to do it, but I think I I don't want Kojima to make the next game. I kind of don't either. <laughs> Although Kojima's a giant fan, but I don't I don't think just being a huge yeah, fan of the franchise means I, you should make the game. You know, just, no thanks. His brand of is weird Kojima is not... really going to make a game with very little dialogue. <laughs> Like, well, on. his brand of weird is not the same as as yeah. Mad Max's brand of weird, yeah. and and I just, I just I don't know I just don't see it. I'd love hey if you told me Kojima was making a uh, a game it's set in a wasteland type thing and just don't call it Mad Max, well, I'd be excited or or even do. I guess I'd want to see it, but I don't know, man. Not that know. it's doing crazy numbers, but the Mad Max game has gained five percent of its. Uh, player base in the past 30 days it's gone up five percent yeah. everybody blew everyone slept on it and it still looks amazing has a great photo mode beautiful game like it holds still up feels like it's the exact like this steam chart for mad max is really weird it's like the same near thousand people are just constantly playing it every month it's so good it's really weird anyway. i wish there was a game i wish there was a new game plus i would i would do that there isn't really it's still fun to just go clear out shit for no reason, though, even though I've done everything. Liam O'Brien plays a great character. It's a great game. The game rocks. And Scrotus I is I think I'm going to play it. I should. I love it. Um, let's move on to this. Uh, we can finally quit talking about that stupid Stellar Blade game because, uh, or at least the controversy, they patched in the pre-censorship costumes. So a bunch of incels are stoked and have wieners again boners again i guess i don't know what you do well it's kind <laughs> of funny because <laughs> i don't know i don't rem i don't know if you released it or not i did a bonus core con i did it's out okay yeah. so it's out so if you check out the last uh bonus core content that i did i talked a little bit about this and one of the things i said in there uh timely was you know the official statement that that they said was that the modified costumes were the intended version of the costumes. And all this theory that it was Sony censorship was basically, you know, it was just that it was a conspiracy theory and there was some logic behind it. And to me, the only piece of logic that really made sense was that, okay, but if it has people this upset and it's not a case of Sony censoring the game, then just release the, uncensored versions of the costumes like just do that that's exactly what they did which to me kind of just says like this was a lot of to do about nothing yep i mean you wouldn't get this if you didn't make the stink so like you know more power to you if you're really excited that you you're getting what you want but to me like this for all the people that got very conspiratorial about this, like them going, okay, here's the costumes, there they are back, kind of tells you that, like, yeah, they didn't mean for it to look like this. Yeah. I and think... so it wasn't the great fight against censorship that you necessarily thought it Some was. Some of them still think it is. Some of them are like... Of course they do. ...dancing in the they... streets and acting like they've had a huge victory and now we press forward to the next great battle. It's like, F right up a tree, dude. All of you weirdos just freaking f off play the game because it's fun i don't want to hear any more if i hear one more thing about stellar blade and the half naked lady i don't care I just don't care by all accounts the game seems like it's pretty fun but i ain't ever gonna I play it fun because i'm sick of it i play it. i thought you did play it no i played the demo but oh i played it it's it, good i like the demo as far as i got but then everyone got weird and i'm like i don't want to go back and play that i'm done you're all weird it's not fun to I don't want to be part of the. You know what? Give me five years when no one's talking about it. Maybe I'll play it then. Yeah. Like Rise of the Tomb Raider. <laughs> uh, yeah, because people got really weird about that game. They did get weird about how she. To be died. fair, they probably would nowadays. Yeah, they, they probably would they get did weird at the time. Yeah. Yeah, and they got weird about how she would die very violently. I remember that. Although that was also like, it feels like the outrage clock just shifts around because i remember when the tomb raider game came out a lot of the outrage around it was is it right for a british person to be raiding these tombs of these indigenous people oh my and stealing their artifacts and it's like okay there's always something it's always a thing there's it's always, always a something. thing if it's not going to be that then it's going to be you remove the side vagina from my costumes like we're always going to be mad about something. here's what they should do they should immediately when it comes to pc stellar blade should get mod support immediately somebody should leave somebody should make her homer simpson but leave the side vagina on the homer simpson model then i'll play your game now i'm in 
All right, how about this story? Uh, are the deadlock leaks real? This is that new uh, Valve shooter that looks like MOBA slash team shooter slash Overwatchy kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Valve's acting like nothing happened, but they're real. They're, they're some proto footage of some it, sort. It, it's a leak of something. Yeah. I just thought it was funny because... They look fine. This doesn't look bad. Is Valve really making their own team shooter? I think they've got... Really copying copy Blizzard's homework. <laughs> like on that I think they got like five games in the works at all times, and half of that shit will never see the light of day. This might be one of those. Um, But it's definitely... It's got the Valve smell on it. It looks like Valve something. Um, but they're but why do they they don't have to talk to anybody? <laughs> they can just they can have a I, I leak and so. just fire a guy and then walk away and you know who cares? I guess. <laughs> I, 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 I wish. Fire us. Uh, I think it's the <laughs> one guy that did it. <laughs> I mean, I guess I don't want them like hyping up things unnecessarily, but you know, I wish they'd put out. I wish they'd announce some shit. I mean, I want I want to look forward to Half Life Alex too. Mm-hmm. The game. Made it seem like there was going to be another one, but you know, it'd be nice if they're like upcoming projects page, like you know, maybe it won't. Maybe they just put maybe it won't get released. We're working on this though, you know, just to get us excited. I don't know. With John well, though, I, I kind of hate how they are a little bit in this regard. Yeah, well, they just are beholden to nobody, including shareholders, so they don't care. Yeah, I'm, it's not like I definitely not. They don't have to do it, but it'd be nice. Like as you know, as a customer, you're just like, hey, it'd be great if you know, because you guys do release games from time to time. It'd just be nice if you could just let us know. Now, I know I'm only sure. speaking for myself when I say this, but I'd rather live in a world where this game didn't exist. <laughs> uh, well, you're, a, you're an Overwatch hater, though. So. I Overwatch is so bad that I can't <laughs> get excited about this or the Marvel game. It ruined other games for me. Well, the Marvel game... Yeah, well, yeah. No, the game I, looks cool. The biggest Scarlet Letter is it's Nettie's making it. But yeah. Apart from that, it looks cool. Also heard some sketchy stuff from, on the inside on that game. We'll see. Oh, yeah? Sketch? Yeah, a little Spider bit of sketch. A little bit of sketch. A little bit of sketch. Yeah. Sketch man's in it. Uh, just kidding. All right, let's see what else. That's it for news that we didn't cover before. So now we lean straight into this little hole called emails. That's a good question. Emails and texts. We got an email from Johnny B who says, hey, uh, core crew, uh, the first time writer, long time listener. I just wanted, sorry, I just recently became a new patron and just had to smile yeah. a bit during my call out last week. And Bo's mention of having a quote, every man's name, unquote, and John calling my name awesome. I mean, let's face it. John's really are the best, both H or yeah. not, he says. Uh, apologies. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Keep up the fabulous in depth reporting stuff. on the best games of the industry alongside the ridiculous uh, ridiculousness that is Lake Runs and Martha, generating some of the best mashups I've laughed at in years. Keep being awesome. Cheers, gents. Johnny. Well, that's very nice, Johnny B. Thank you for that. Johnny B, you keep on uh, we've, being awesome. Yeah. We've confirmed that there is a Lake Run road in the U.S. Is there? Oh, we did. We got a picture of it and everything, didn't we? Yeah. 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 Oh, I, think I have one of my, yeah. It's your wallpaper. <laughs> well, it's not my wallpaper. But <laughs> That'd be amazing, in the, though. And the core, <laughs> one of our core guild members, Noma Cost, yeah. has sent a photo of it. I don't know where it is now, but. You know, I'm watching this video over here on the corner of my eye of this Valve game. It's Overwatch as hell. Yeah. yeah. That's the reason why it looks incredibly so, unappealing. So me. I would say, like, stop copying Blizzard. Just make Half-Life Alex VR and Half-Life 3. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> like, remember Artifact? They tried to make Hearthstone. It but didn't wasn't... Work. Wasn't Overwatch kind of like an answer to Team Fortress, yeah. which is Valve? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so isn't it just coming back full circle? What are we doing? Just stop. Make something different. Look, sometimes and guys, snakes, nobody so, is playing Overwatch anymore. Somebody Don't write was, sometimes in. I know you, yeah, I know, some, whoever is writing the email right now. I know you're still playing. Somebody's playing, and I know that by saying this, I'm saying you don't count. But like, go stand on a payload or something. Some look. Like, some snakes. Stand on a some, some snakes need to eat their tails. That's what we're seeing here. Uh, Valve then Blizzard then Valve then Blizzard. That's how this will go forever. Uh, all right, that is it for that. Let's get to this text here from Toger. Toger is his name. Oh, hey, core guys. I've recently gotten sucked back into Total War Warhammer Three with good reviews of the d new DLC. I decided to go with a Termukin. Am I saying that? Termurkin? Term it's the Nurgle Ogre Lord. 
I don't know much about that. Anyway, that's the race. One of his voice lines is a direct reference to Deckard Cain. The line is, stay a while and bleed. Uh, awesome reference. I thought you guys would enjoy it. I also wish I could clip it. The game is in, good, in a good place, by the way. Thanks for the content. Longtime listener since the beginning. Toger. I am very curious Hello. about those. I've not played one of those Total War Warhammer things. They're all on sale right now. Are they? I'm thinking about getting three, despite the fact that I already have two and didn't play it, and I already have one and didn't play it. But damn it, I need three, so Mm. I cannot play that one too. It's 50% off. Oh, it says I own this. Did I get this? (laughs) Oh, no, that's two. I have two. I don't have three. Uh, But I don't want an old one. I want a new one. Yeah, well, welcome to my world, Scott. How many hours have you put in these games? <laughs> Not nearly enough. I'm on that chart. <laughs> I'm on that chart that says yep, in the nine you and me. We're holding years. it down. We're like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I love strategy games, said the guys who keep buying them and not playing them. Yeah. I- uh it's fine. I want to live in a world where Decker Kane just does all the action one liners. I mean, you want to live in a world where Decker Kane is in video games again. Period. Yeah, that'd be great. Wouldn't it be great if we could find a way to make Diablo fun again? Yeah. Um, and put in characters that are a little whimsical and weird and <laughs> beloved instead of someone that's just self serious all just the time. Grumpy. Yeah. Yeah. We don't um, have any content from him yet. We need I guess we need stay a while and bleed. He's gonna be the <laughs> voice of uh Galactus now, right? Oh yeah. The yeah. voice of yeah. um good luck getting him to identify your items at a reasonable price. He's too busy being Galactus. Yeah, he's gotta eat a whole way planet. To, way to hire somebody that's about to become incredibly unavailable. Yeah. I'm sure he'll show up for Diablo Yellow where Pikachu follows behind. What's you. his name? Like Guinnison Jenner Jenner Burb. What's his name? Ralph Ennison. That's it. <laughs> Hold on. Let me find his name. Yeah, Ralph Ennison. He is your new uh, Galactus. He's a great voice for Galactus. Oh, it'd be amazing. It'd be amazing. But if you, real- you know they're going to like post-process it and make it sound big and shake the whole theater. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, it'd be so good. He's probably stoked about um, Anya Taylor-Joy playing uh, Furiosa. He, she was his daughter in uh, the, the Vivitch or the Witch. With the two V's in the name. That was, he was the, the dad in that. Yeah. Anyway. The beach. He said, one day you will become. What they call her in the movie? I don't want to spoil that. All right. Uh, that's it for your <laughs> emails and texts and all that. Uh, talk to the court, gmail.com or 801-471-0462 is our text and voice line. Thank you for using that. Uh, some brand new patrons since we last spoke. Actually, a nice little list here. We got uh, Simon Johnston, Nicholas Shorten, Mark Sousey. Bruno Hewitt, Zoot, and Zoot, Adam Z. Look or C rather. There's no Z. That's not even a. That's not even like a. Like if it was an S or you know. I can't even. I don't know why I thought Z. It's a C. It makes no sense. It's on the like opposite. You spent some hours on the Fury Road. It changes a man. <laughs> it really does. Oh man! You know the other thing I noticed, John. This is not a spoiler. Uh, <laughs> the road itself in the first in Fury Road is all kind of dirt. Right, there's no real pavement. This one had some pavement, so that tells me something about the intervening 15 years. Like yeah. either big storms pushed it all over, it finally fell apart. I don't know the answer. Yeah, but I'm building worlds in my head, and it's making me kind of empty-headed for everything else. Oh, it's so cool. It's like, so good. It's, George Miller needs to just make these movies nonstop because I want to keep experiencing them. I don't have a lot of faith that other people are going to do a good job. Mm. You know, I, I hope we, he's around for a long time. But how many mo- more movies can we get out of? We need to mine this vein while it exists, yeah. <laughs> George. I mean, so, he's in his 70s. So, her, you know, I'm not saying the clock's ticking, but you know, I can't do this forever. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying that he shouldn't have freedom but we need to take it away and just let him make Mad Max movies. And his wife's amazing editing, have her stick around too. It's like, come on, man. You've been doing this. Just keep it up. Don't ever stop. Don't get all bunged up and talking pigs and freaking penguins and all that shit like last time. Forget about all that. Idris Elba doesn't need to be a genie. Mm -mm. Don't waste your time. You can can put him in Fury Road. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Not as a genie, maybe. Hell yeah. Do it. I noticed there were some indigenous Australians in this, which I just thought was nice. Those guys get forgotten in Australian things, and that was really cool. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for today's program. 
a reminder that we'll be here uh, next Thursday, normal time, 5 p.m., nothing weird. Everything should be good. That's not watching a movie before. I'm not watching so a movie. It be on time. <laughs> There's no movie that was prepaid. I'm not for mad it. about it. It's a special occasion, man. I'm glad you did it. It is. Yeah. It's just no one's gonna begrudge you watching Furiosa. And my mom will be home from a hospital, so no weird scares with that. Everything should be okay. So be here next week when we have more to talk about. For now, though, hey, Grandma, do you want to tell us what we played? Well, if you're curious what what the video games were that they talked about on this here show, anything that wasn't Furious in the movie, this is what it was. <laughs> Scott played Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh-huh. That's a game from 2015, he said. I was only 89. <laughs> he also played Arctic Eggs. That's the game where you cook eggs and shit. Yeah. And he also played Fabledom, one of the strategy games that nobody's playing anymore. Uh-huh. John played Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> Apparently, it's twenty fifteen all over again everywhere today. Yeah. Bo, he 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 finished Mullet Mad Jack. That's the game where you got ten seconds to live, which is how I live my every day. He also played World of Warcraft, Season of Discovery, StarCraft 2, and Heroes of the Storm. Wow. Take the blizzard dick out of your mouth, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, that, that's so rude, Grandma. Oh, man. And he fell for a fishing scheme. <laughs> oh, yeah, the fishing boss. He got the fishing boss. He beat it. Nicely, nicely yeah. done, Bo. You beat the fishing boss. Uh, well, that was cr- that was I great. Hate fishing, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Hate fishing in games and hate fishing in tech. Yeah. Hate How about real fishing though? Like li- in real life, we go fishing, like a pretty lake boring. or something. No, it's really. Pretty, I did it. I did it a lot as a kid. There's mm. a lot of fishers in my family. I'm sorry, Bo. I feel like Grandma got too salty about no, 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 what that's you per- <laughs> Oh, that's t- I'm, it's okay. You can talk about. That was funny as hell. It's fine. I don't. Never forget. Well, this I day. meant laughing hysterically about getting fished as somebody who oh, had to go oh. through the reformatting. We can laugh because like <laughs> I, I, no, no damage fun. has no damage has been done, so it is funny. Yeah, Let's in the end, in the end, everybody. My pride hurts away. that I fell for it, but apart from that, yeah, I think I'm okay. Yeah, so. you're good. For the dick in the mouth, I apologize to the kids. Yeah, to the kids listening. Yeah, sorry. For <laughs> Tell the your parents listening. this show is no longer appropriate for yeah. you. Someone it never think, was. Think of the children. All right, that's going to do it for us. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We can't wait to be back here again next week with more. I just know it's going to be full of great stuff and nothing to do with Stellar Blade. So come back then. <laughs> we'll see you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com. Space! Yeah. Space!